Hi, I'm Melissa from Sogo Survey. I want to talk to you today about anonymity. Anonymity is a really, really great feature. When I bring it up with clients, sometimes they ask me this question. What if they don't believe it's anonymous? Let's talk about it. Very often when I'm working with clients on sensitive topics like employee engagement or performance evaluation, I suggest using an anonymous survey. We can see this makes a huge difference in uh, response rates and the quality of data, of course, because people feel that they're able to share their candid thoughts without um, you know, any fear of retribution, for example. But often we get the question about what if people don't believe it? Maybe there are some underlying trust issues, could be the reason why you're doing the project in the first place, um, but those trust issues might make you think your employees or your audience will be suspicious. Especially if you do something like send it to their email address, use an employee ID, even if you set it as anonymous, there are a lot of questions that come up. Um, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of anxiety about the whole thing to start with. Absolutely, when you start to have these sensitive conversations, there's no question, that's exactly why we built this feature. So keep in mind, you can use the best tools, the best technology in the world, but trust is a little bit deeper than that. So we need to make sure that we're both working in partnership to make sure that um, these engagements are successful and that trust is restored. So think about it this way too. We can help. There's a lot of things that we can do on the SOGO survey end, on our platform and our best practices, but there's also a lot of ideas about how you can help to improve that trust um, in, in terms of that employee engagement, performance evaluation, all of those things benefit when there's more candid feedback and when there's underlying trust. So things that we can do on our end, anonymity is very, very easy. You know, so we spend often a lot of time talking about it and very little time actually enabling it. Um, you'll see one switch under options. You can turn it on, confirm, good to go. Um, when participants access the survey, they're warned. They see a footer message that gives them full details. They can click on it and learn a little bit more about what anonymity means, knowing that it means that you know, the administrator of the survey can't see who you are. So don't worry. Go ahead and tell, <laughs> tell the results. You know, the results are going to be collected, of course, um, but no matter where you're looking at in the platform. So distribution through reporting. As a survey administrator, you have no idea who said what. Um, this still works with reminders, though, so you're still able to send reminders even if you're not sure who they're going to. You'll see um, that the system knows which links have been used. So when you're sending those, especially single-use links, um, it, the system knows, you know, out of 100 people, these 25 already responded, and it will only send reminders to the other 75. So this still works when it's an anonymous survey as well, because the system knows, even if we don't know, uh, we have no access to it. Of course, we get all the data, but we have no idea who said what. On your end, communication is a huge part of this process. If you're letting people know, um, you know, hey, we're having this conversation, which is a part of our consistent strategies on, you know, engagement, for example, um, when you let people know that that, uh, that survey is coming, that helps a lot. So it's not just all relying on that one invitation in their inbox. Make sure you're clear on the purpose of why you're doing this. If you're just thinking, oh, it's January, we usually reach out and do a survey, might not be the best reason. So think about really the underlying reasons. It helps you narrow down the scope sometimes so you're not just encompassing every single thing in one survey. Um, you know, and making sure that you are gathering data that you can actually act on because acting on that really makes a big difference. Um, you know, in your culture in general, but also in future outreaches. If I ask for your feedback and then I don't use it, you're very unlikely to give me feedback again in the future because you say, well, what did you do with it the last time? Um, and so that last time, thinking about the next time, consistency over time, use anonymity consistently so people have that understanding of this is how it works, we're doing this again. You don't have to start from scratch. So, of course, you're not able to follow up with people, any retribution, all of those things that they were afraid of aren't going to happen because it's an anonymous survey. But continuing to follow through with that process, the consistency, and showing that you've achieved your purpose is really, really helpful, both with the communication on the front end and after the fact. Um, this is an idea that we came up with on talking with a client who said, well, but what if they really, really, really don't believe? Okay, so at a certain point, we have to make some decisions, but this is a fun idea that we had for a password party. So if you are working with a um, clean, it's, let's say an employee group or an, another team that you're not really sure um, that they're going to trust that the survey is um, anonymous, this is the one to think about. So tell your teams the survey is coming, that communication piece, set it up as anonymous, again, very simple, and create, so let's say you have 100 participants, 100 single-use randomly generated passwords. This is very easy to set up um, on distribution, so you can set, oh, I want it to be five letters or letters and numbers, whatever you want. Just make it totally random, not employee IDs or anything like that. So on the day of the launch, let's say it's a Monday or Tuesday. On Monday, for example, maybe you're going to let people know that this is coming. The CEO is going to say, survey starts today, go to town, hooray. 
and send out the link. And that link is basically to uh, the splash page, the survey access page. But nobody's going to be able to participate until they get their passwords. So later that day, you have a big team meeting or party. It has to be a party. It has to be fun. Um, but let people ask any questions that they have up front before the survey starts so there's no confusion. It's very clear exactly why we're doing this and you know how the results are going to be used and all those kinds of things. Get people excited about it. And on their way out the door, I would literally I would literally fill a hat with all of those passwords. You've printed them out, you know, cut them into little slips. Every single person gets one of these randomly generated passwords. They can draw it on their way out and then they can go back to their, you know, desks or whatever it is and take the survey. You know, as a bonus, of course, you could have tablets or computers there as well so that people can participate right away. But in this way, you know that each person has one access point, one use, one password to get in, and they know that you have no idea who's got which one. So that's a kind of a fun idea. It combines a little bit of work on your end and a little bit of work on our end to make sure that uh, you're building that trust, but making it fun. We don't want people to feel stressed out. You know, it's a little bit stressful already to share very candid information about your feedback, you know, your supervisor, your team, any of those kinds of things. Nobody wants to feel like there's going to be retribution on the other end. So make it fun. And uh, just an idea. <laughs> if you've got other better ideas, I would love to hear them so we can share them with other clients and our other uh, team members here as well. There's a little bit more on this on the full blog here. You can check it out there. And if you've got those feedback of other ideas, things that you're doing to boost uh, trust, you know, and improve that, especially with anonymous surveys, reach out to us and let us know. We'd love to hear about it. Thanks so much for connecting with us today. We look forward to seeing you again soon. In the meantime, check out our website, sogosurvey.com, or connect with us on social media at Sogo Survey. See you next time.